Hi, this is Travis, and um, this is for the Building Decarbonization Operations Workgroup. Uh, we did a survey uh, to gather some opinions about um, a couple of topics related to, to building operations. I'm going to share the results of those now. So um, on here, let me share a screen. So it should be just white at the moment. Uh, but we will start right away. OK, so the way the survey was structured was each question sort of had two um, statements to it, a positive and a negative statement. Um, and so we'll be able to see both results together. So the first question was the buildings that I've opened in the last 10 years work according to the design intent. Um, we generally agreed with this. Um, and and we actually had a pretty strong agreement among all of us. So we agreed with the positive statement. Um, we disagreed with the negative statement and that amount of spread there, 43% spread, 57% spread is not bad. You'll see uh, a lot more divergence later on. <laughs> uh, second question, most buildings that my company operates have a well understood basis of de or design intent. The facility engineers understand how the systems are supposed to work. Uh, most of us agreed with this and there was just some divergence in the opinions. So you could see uh, we were 4.6 on the positive statement, 3.3 on the negative statement and that 57% uh, spread. But you can look at the data, the 57% spread there sort of represents uh, a little more overall spread. Uh, question number three, our average middle of the bell curve, not the best, not the worst facility operating engineer with a high school or trade school education can operate our buildings to the design intent with the tools that they have. We were overall neutral to positive on this. Um, and so we, it's a 4.4 to the positive statement and a 3.2 to the negative statement. But look at the spread. Uh, there's significant spread in both the positive and uh, the negative statement. Uh, I'm not going to be shy about interjecting my opinion about what I think these results mean, right? <laughs> um, the, there is the, the answer to this should be yes and strong agreement. Um, so I think the fact that we're neutral, that we believe that uh, uh, the average uh, operating engineer maybe can operate our buildings uh, with the tools that they have, we don't all strongly agree with that. Uh, I think that definitely indicates <laughs> um, the state of things and, and where we have some opportunities for growth. Uh, question number four, our building control softwares have easy and intuitive software environments and graphical interfaces that make operating buildings uh, cor correctly easily. And the negative one, uh, because the negative one was slightly differently worded. Our building control software have too many points and they make it easy for our operators to make bad decisions and overrides. Um, we were neutral on this, um, 3.6 in both cases with the 71% spread. So big spread and overall, uh, this just basically means that we disagree on this, that among the nine people that took the survey, we just flat out disagree upon this, um, which is again, interesting <laughs> um, in an ideal world or where we should be going in the future. Um, we should all strongly agree with this statement, right? Our, con our building control system should have easy, intuitive software environments and graphical interfaces that make buildings operations uh, easy. Uh, we sh that's, that should be the state of things, and we should all agree with that. So there's some definite uh, pointers to opportunities for growth here. Um, this is a very similar story here on the next question. Uh, next question was, our buildings have a manageable number of alarms which are effective at guiding our operating engineers to the right maintenance and optimizations task. The negative version of that was, our buildings have too many alarms which are difficult to manage and not effective at guiding our operating engineers uh, to the right maintenance and optimizations task according to the design intent. Again, in both of these cases, we have this neutrality thing with this wide spread. You can see uh, question number one there, there's a spread all the way across the curve. Uh, so uh, these are statements that <laughs> uh, the, the question, the positive statement here, we have a manageable number of alarms that are effective at guiding our operating engineers to the right maintenance and optimizations task. Um, this should be the state of affairs and we should all agree with this. So there's opportunity for growth. Um, uh, this is an interesting one. When the program use in a building changes, we should change the systems to adapt to it. Uh, the, the negative side of this, when we design and construct a building, we should anticipate future uses and design those building systems to be able to do more. 
uh, up front with capital. Um, and the the moral of the story here is is disagreement and divergence. Um, so in both of these uh, questions, we have this central average uh, with the spread almost all the way across the curve. Uh, question number seven, when most new buildings are commissioned, the result of commissioning is that the buildings work flawlessly according to the design intent. The negative there was that when most new buildings are commissioned, commissioning often fails, and the result is that the buildings still don't work uh, to the design intent. Uh, we were new. We were overall neutral on the value of commissioning here. Uh, there's some divergence in the opinion, but I want you to think about that. Commissioning is probably. I don't know if there's anything that ad, that Ashray could advocate more strongly as a commissioning of systems. But as a group, those of us that took this survey, we were neutral on the value of commissioning. Um, in the future, we need to all strongly agree that commissioning works and commissioning works every time. This next question is even more interesting uh, because the question was, data-based continuous commissioning is superior and more cost-effective than retro commissioning with the commissioning agent auditing the building. The negative version being retro commissioning and commissioning with a, an agent is superior to these newfangled forms of database and continuous commissionings. Um, this was our strongest opinion, right? We definitely agreed with the positive statement. We definitely disagreed with the negative statement and our agreement on these was fairly strong. Again, this is a commentary on the state of affairs in ASHRAE. ASHRAE doesn't even have a standard or a guideline for database commissioning or um, you know, database continuous commissioning. Um, are the guideline zero, guideline one, the ASHRAE standards and ASHRAE guidelines that we have on commissioning are entirely dedicated um, to the boots on the ground type of commissioning that we all said uh, was the inferior technology, right? And here's question number nine. Uh, retro commissioning and energy auditing are great processes. They always produce solid savings and a good return on investment. Um, what you're going to see here is that we were neutral on this with tremendous divergence. So you see divergence across the scale uh, with an overall neutral. Um, if you think about that positive statement, that should be something, or at least in the future, when we're decarbonizing buildings, if the mission is to decarbonizing buildings, then retro commissioning and energy auditing need to be great processes that always produce solid savings and good return on investment. The fact that we have divergence on this uh, indicates that we have a lot of work to do. Uh, in the confidence, even amongst ourselves. Imagine how our clients feel. Uh, and then finally, question number 10. Um, every building needs to have a unique HVAC design based on its location, geometry, and function. No two designs are significantly alike. And the negative version of this was that HVAC systems can have completely standardized sequences uh, that work in all buildings. Um, this was our broadest, I think this was our broadest disagreement, right? You can see it. Uh, the answers range from, from one to seven, and they're very broad upon this, which this to me is kind of a troubling uh, response out of our group, because this basically says that uh, efforts like uh, guideline 36, standard sequences of operations, uh, are for naught. <laughs> you know, we don't believe in them. Uh, my personal opinion, by the way, is that I do believe in them. I do think that we can. Uh, I'm one of the ones that strongly agrees in standardization across different buildings and even across different buildings applications. Uh, but as a group, we do not have uh, confidence in standardization and we, we carry forward this belief uh, that every building needs to have a truly unique HVAC basis of design. Uh, we, you know, stands in the face of the idea that a, that a carrier unit could be sold um, across the nation. They would need to be different in each geometry. So I think this survey, um, as what often happens to me with survey work, I started off kind of hating this survey, at least right after I deployed it. <laughs> uh, but I've wound up uh, very much, I think there's a lot of insights to be carried out of this. So uh, that's what I got.